greetings friends and welcome to the ability guide on an ability cooldown. So friends today I've got this chap over here. He's just got a basic ability. It's a fireball one. It's nothing too special. Let's just have a look. Boom. No explosion or anything really. It's just a simple thing. But what's annoying about it is I can kind of just keep doing it. And if I mash the button, I'll have sort of like a semi animation going, which is it just looks terrible. And so today we're going to solve this issue by giving this ability a cooldown. So we're going to solve this in three ways. Firstly, we're going to prevent the ability from being spammable. In other words, when you press the button, so for example, I've got it bound to R1, then it's going to just um, do it once and you won't be able to press the button again or pressing the button will do nothing until the animation is done. Then the second thing we're going to do is give the ability a cooldown. We'll make it, let's say, three seconds. And then finally, we're going to use creative ways to represent that cooldown. So friends, whichever is the most important for you, you can stick around for. Uh, but hopefully these will be useful for you. So I've got a nice big canvas here. <coughs> now let's begin. So I've got my ability and it's quite essential to just have it stuck on a timeline. You don't want it to have multiple elements because it'll just make it a bit complicated. So here we are. He gets into the position, then he'll emit a fireball and then he'll return to the original position. So that is my fireball ability. Now the first thing we're going to do is prevent the ability from being spammable. Alrighty, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to our gadgets, go to logic and processing, processing, whichever you prefer, and click on AND gate. We're going to throw that in. Then this is the R1 button, the sort of key binding for R1. And we're going to, well quickly I'm just going to turn off my grid snap. We're going to take this. And instead of going directly to the timeline, which is the ability timeline, we're going to just pinch it there, take it away and put it into the input A. Then the output of the AND gate, we're going to stick into this. So <clears throat> what's happening here is we're creating, there's got to be something else happening for this ability to work. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to add is a back to logic and processing. We're going to select a counter. So now, when the AND gate is activated, it's going to add one to the counter. Next, we're going to add, and here where it gets funky, is the NOT gate. Now, when the counter is full, it's going to activate the NOT gate. And what's the NOT gate going to do? It's going to be in the B slot of the AND gate. So it's a lot of funkiness at the moment, but bear with me. So basically what happens is, what this does is, it makes, makes it so that when this is activated, and not anything else, then it'll work. So in other words, it this basically just prevents it from being spammable, right? Then when the ability is done, we're going to have on end trigger. So when this ability is done, we're going to have reset counter or reset count, and that's going to make the ability usable again. So there you go. Let's see if it works. Baboom. Now I'm mashing the button. I'm not sure if you can hear. I'm mashing it, bah! but it's not doing it until I complete the ability. So now we have we have made an uninterruptible ability, ability that cannot be spammed or have the button mashed. So that's section one done, friends. If that's all you need, that's cool. But next we're gonna go on to how to give the ability a cooldown. Alrighty, let's get stuck in. So giving it a cooldown is actually super easy. All we have to do now is, we'll see here that we've got if we look at our counter, we have when this completes, when the, the ability timeline completes, it'll reset the count. But we don't want that. We want to add in a timer. So let's delete that connection there, delete that Y. Now we're going to go to logic and processing, which we sh should still be in, and we're going to throw down a timer. Let's have it at three seconds. I think that's a, that's a fairly nice time. I was originally using five seconds, but five seconds is long, bruh, sure, hectic. Anyway, so now that this is our nice timer set up, we're going to have it that when the ability is used, so when the AND gate is triggered, it's going to start the timer. Now, you can attach this to a bunch of things. You can attach this to the on end trigger, then you start the timer. But personally, I prefer as you use the ability, it starts to um, start the timer. So that's a personal preference, but I reckon this is best, especially if you want to have some, some cool creative representations of your cooldown disappearing over time. Alrighty, so now we've got this, and essentially, Easy, easy peasy, when we've got the um, timer finished, the signal, it's going to go to reset count. Easiest of easy modes. 
So now this is going to be a three second chat. Let's see. So press boom. I'm going to keep pressing. I'm keep pressing. Ah, there we go. One, two, three, boom. So there we are, friends. That's a cool down. Easy mode, section two done. If that is all you need and all you wanted is a cool down and how to figure it out with a timer, then there you are, friends. But now, for those of you who are interested in being a little bit creative and having some funky representations of this cool down, then stick around because it's going to start getting hairy now. Alrighty, friends. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to go to your timer and have the timer type to count down. Alrighty? Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is have a representation of the sort of um, the bar. Let's say you want like a, a bar to refill when you've used the ability. All right. So we're going to go to a text displayer. We're going to throw that down here. And we're going to just put a space bar. I learned this trick from um, Mr. Wushi. You should definitely check out you should definitely check out his channel because that's super great. Next thing you're going to do is go to text box properties, turn off auto fit. There we are. Next thing you're going to do is align it to the screen on the right here. So horizontal alignment needs to be on the right. That's very important because when it fills and refills, it's going to go from left to right. So that's very important that you make it horizontal here. Then you can make it whatever color you want. For me, I kind of make it yellow because it's not quite the same as like an energy gauge or like a mana gauge that refills or magic gauge. Um, you might make that kind of blue, but this isn't quite the same thing. This is like a cooldown. So this is like if you had like an ulti ability, an ultimate ability or something a special and you use it and it's got like a 30 second cooldown or something and it's, you know, um, but it's, it's, it's really up to you, whatever color you want to make it. But for me, I made it yellow. All righty. So there we are. We've got this chap. Then we're going to clone this and we're going to make it, we're going to go to text box properties and the color of the, the color of the text box itself, we're going to make black. And then, in terms of the uh, text display settings, we're going to make it sort order zero so that it's behind the original first one. So that just means when the yellow chap is depleted, there's going to be the black one behind it. So the whole bar doesn't, doesn't disappear. So it's kind of like the shape of the bar remains, but it can be filled and emptied. If you don't have that, that, that background black piece, then it kind of just, the whole thing grows. And if that works for you, that's totally fine. But this is just a personal preference and also um, a suggestion by um, Mr. Wushi in his video. So here we are. Next thing we're going to do is, so we've got our nice energy bar, that's looking cool. And the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to get a keyframe and we're going to have a representation of this being depleted, all right? So we're gonna go here, we're gonna go to the text displayer and we're going to drag it down to the bottom and stop recording. Now, this is where it tends to get rather funky and where a lot of finicky, finicky business tends to go on. But we're going to go to our logic and processing. And the next thing we're going to do is put down a signal manipulator. Alrighty. Now, friends, what we're going to do here is attach this to here, the output here. And we're going to attach the input. Or well, the input is going to be based on not the counter, sorry, but on the timer. And it's going to be the current time of the timer. Oops. It's not, it does not want to go in. Oh, there we are. Okay, now this, this is where it gets funky. And me, like I'm a noob with all this logic and processing stuff, so I really had to experiment with it. But first we're going to go to, we're going to um, invert output. Then we're going to increase this to three, which is our... Yeah, three, which is our which is our sort of chap. Then we're just going to. Yeah, this is the one we want. So we, so I pressed in, invert output once. I'm going to press it now again, so that you've got this nice down thing here. If you've got a crossing over, that's not what you want. You want it to be here, and you can leave this as one. Alrighty. So now, as the timer depletes, um, the energy bar is going to loop. It's going to go back up again. So this is what we've got for our. This is what we've got for our signal manipulator. Make sure these things are all looking like that. So this is on three, this is on one, and yeah. Alrighty, so that's the signal manipulator. Let's see where we are at the moment. So we've got a nice energy bar. I'm gonna shoot a blast. 
Boom, it depletes and it charges. Boom, it depletes and it charges. Boom, it depletes and then it charges again. Woo, oh, it's so, it looks so nice, don't you think? Woo, it's just satisfying. Okay, friends, if that is all you need, if that is all you want, then you can leave now. But I'm just gonna start adding all sorts of bells and whistles to this thing, so if you want those, then have them. If you don't, then please just leave, get out of here. You have a great day, okay. Hi friends, just while I was making the video, I realized it was quite dense and quite long. So all the extra things, all the bells and whistles, I'm going to do in a second video in part two. So if you're interested in that, feel free to check it out. It'll be out in the next few days. But yeah, thank you friends. Have a good one and catch you on the flip-flop. Peace out. <laughs>